All right. Yes. Member Councillor for Stilais. Yeah, yeah, please. Your Honour, the Indian Constitution was designed to protect its citizens and promote equality towards everyone. Although it doesn't seem like it, as Mr. Kapoor is being denied his basic right to freedom, the appellant has been debating for a period of 14 years, which include being illegally detained for five and a half years. His detainment after his acquittal is unjustified. He was also afflicted with mental abuse, which shouldn't be the case no matter what the crime he committed. This isn't the first case scenario where an Indian citizen was illegally detained. In Mr. Bhim Singh versus the state of Jammu and Kashmir, he was illegally prevented from attending the session of the Legislative Assembly. He was also inflicted with harassment by none other than the men in uniform who were meant to protect us, the police. The petitioner was also faced with a similar plight and was inflicted with mental abuse throughout his prison sentence. The jailer supervising reportedly states that the unlawful detention was due to the letter number 1838 on the 10th of May 1974 of the superintendent of the central jail to a district magistrate of Muzaffarpur, who sent the letter to the law department, which suggested that the appellant was unstable. This could easily be proven baseless as there's no medical diagnosis or jail treatment in to, with, has a record to support their claim. In addition to this, based on a report on February 18 of 1977, the lo local civil surgeon claims that the appellant is normal and well, which was thereafter passed on to the law department on February 21st of 1977. Unfortunately, it seems that our country pays no heed to these cases as they continue to affect the citizens of the state. Another such case was the Esanand versus the state of Tamil Nadu, where he was not only denied, he was not only detained illegally, but suffered bodily harm, torture, and to some degree was even humiliated in front of everyone present. This took place in the hands of, again, none other than the police who are instituted to protect us. Under Section 30 of the Protect, protect under Section 30 of the Protection of the Human Rights Act of 1993, speedy trials are to be provided in case of violation of any human right. This was enforced in the above mentioned case and should be the same, should be the same case over here too. These atrocities are committed towards us by the police is a serious misuse of power on their side and completely goes against the idea of protecting the Indian citizens. How are the citizens of our country meant to feel safe when the police itself are the ones putting us in danger? Another instance of this could be the Nilabati Behra versus the state of Farisa. When Suman Behra, the son of Nilabati, was taken into police custody and the next day, his body was found near the railway track. The lacerations of his body indicated towards an unnatural death. This, the decision in this case, therefore, made sure that the state could no longer escape liability in public law and had to be compelled to pay cons the compensation when it committed such gross violation of one's fundamental rights, as well as the very basic human rights. It awarded a compensation of 1,50,000 to the petitioner. The Supreme Court also ordered the state of Orissa to initiate criminal pro proceedings against those who killed Suman. The appellant had been illegally detained and had to go out a massive amount of humiliation and even severe depression, which is quite despondent to see. This is barely the loss he has faced. He has also faced these, uh, su he's also suffered from long-term causes of this, of losing personal connections, assets, and even jobs. The appellant may not be a perfectly righteous person, but that shouldn't matter because even if he may be committed of a crime, that doesn't give anyone excuse, that doesn't give anyone excuse for to be subjected for physical detainment and mental torture. It would consider it would be considered a severe violation of right of our freedom, right to freedom. So why should Mr. Kapoor be the only exception in this case? Our rights cannot be violated, no matter who we are and what we do. Everyone should be treated the same. And as long as we are the citizens of India, by the grace of our beloved constitution. Therefore, I urge this court to take severe action of the, on this horrendous act committed against Mr. Kapoor. Fine. Um... Now, second council portion, would you like to proceed? I'm sorry, so I was facing audio problems. No, no, problem. no problem, yeah. So would you like to... 
May the council approach the dais? Sure, please. In Katri was a state of Bihar, more popularly known as the Bhagalpur Blindings case, a case in which the police blinded 31 individuals under trial by pouring acid into their eyes, the Supreme Court, for the very first time, was faced with a dilemma whether or not to award compensation for the violation of right to life and personal liberty guaranteed by, guaranteed by Article 21. As proven and highlighted by my first speaker, Mr. Kapoor has been grossly violated of his fundamental rights, having been detained for 14 years after he was acquitted, something I feel we can all agree that no person should ever have to go through. Thankfully, the framers of our beautiful constitution created safeguards against the violation of the fundamental rights of the citizen. And this safeguard was Article 32, which contains the right to constitutional remedies. Article 32 is the very soul of our constitution and nation as it ensures the protection of our fundamental rights and that the government does not violate or disrespect the fundamental rights of the citizen. The appellant, Mr. Kapoor, has filed this case under Article 32 in hopes of getting some compensation to continue his life like any other normal citizen. After being unlawfully detailed for over 14 years, Mr. Kapoor has invariably been stripped of his very life and freedom. He has lost his job in, has lost his job in all connections in and to the real world. The controversy or issue or question here is whether Article 32 provides monetary compensation for violation of Article 21. This brings us back to Khatri versus State of Bihar, where the Supreme Court faced a dilemma of whether to award compensation for violation of right to life and personal liberty granted under Article 21 for the first time. It was observed by Jess, by the bench headed by Justice Bhagwati that if compensation was not granted, Article 21 would be reduced to nullifying a mere rope of stand. The Bhagalpur blinding case made criminal jurisprudence history by becoming the first case in which the Supreme Court ordered compensation for violation of basic human rights. Mr. Kapoor has similarly been violated of his right to life and personal liberty, and he inevitably deserves medical treatment at government expense, extra payment for his rehabilitation, and compensation for his illegal detention in jail for over 14 years. He cannot be expected to continue his, by, to continue his life by simply being released from jail without any monetary relief for rehabilitation in order to at least have a semblance of a normal life. It is imperative to provide monetary relief to Mr. Kapoor as compensation for the violation of of his fundamental rights. Not doing so will be doing mere lip service to his fundamental right to liberty, which the state government has so grossly violated. But Khatri versus State of Bihar was not the only instance where monetary compensation was provided for violation of Article 21. To provide further precedence where monetary compensation has been provided to people whose fundamental rights have been violated, in Sebastian M. Hongri versus Union of India, the Union of India was directed to pay an exemplary cost of 1 lakh rupees to each of the wives of persons on their presumed unnatural debt. In Bhim Singh versus the state of Jammu and Kashmir, the Supreme Court had awarded compensation to the MLA petitioner uh, for being illegally prevented by the state from attending the session of the Legislative Assembly. And in Saheli versus Union of India, damages had been awarded to the mother of the child against the Delhi administration and its police officers who had caused the death of the child. In state of Maharashtra versus Ravi Kanpati, compensation was awarded to handcuffing was awarded for handcuffing and parading an under trial prisoner in a procession in streets during investigation thus the principles of vicarious liability of the state were invoked in all of these cases so if mr kapoor has similarly been violated of his fundamental right by the state why shouldn't he receive compensation why should we strip a man of his solution and measure of getting some semblance of his life back after the absolute horrors that he's faced Further, the respondent state in the jailer's affidavit has stated that Mr. Kapoor was apparently was released from jail upon his acquittal because he was reported to be insane, but has disclosed no data on the basis of which he was adjudged insane. Mr. Kapoor was apparently of unsound mind at the time of his acquittal, but this information has was only communicated to the law department after about six years on May 10, 1974. And even after this, when three years, after another three years, when Mr. Kapoor was to be normal by civil surgeon Muzaffarpur, the appellant was not released from jail for another five years. 
Further, the state has not provided any proof or statement regarding the specific measures taken to cure him of that affliction. And more importantly, whether it took 14 years to cure his mental imbalance. No medical opinion is produced in support of the diagnosis that he was insane, nor has any jail record been produced to show what kind of medical treatment was prescribed for, administered to him, and for how long. The letter number 1838, dated May 10, 1974, which according to paragraph 3 of the affidavit, was sent to the Lord Department by Superintendent of the Central Jail, Musaipur, has not been presented before the court either. In addition to this, there is nothing to show that the practitioner was found insane on the very date of his acquittal. In light of the above mentioned fact, it is evident that there is no substantial basis whatsoever that Mr. Kapoor was of unsound mind. With this, having proven the necessity of this court to provide compensation to Mr. Kapoor for violation of his fundamental rights as a measure to impose state liability and ensure that such horrendous violations does not occur again, and having proven that there is no substantial evidence to prove that Mr. Kapoor was of unsound mind, the council rests her case. Great. Um... That's great. So, council person would you like to come up uh, again with a prayer? Can I request the state government to grant the applicant with a monetary compensation for the extended imprisonment faced by the applicant, cover the medical expenses of the applicant for the abuses faced during the term, and provide an extra share payment for his rehabilitation process for the mental abuse as deemed fit by the court, keeping in mind the state of unemployment, no connection with the rest, illegally detained for over 14 years, and mentally deteriorated state of the affair and pass any other order that it deems fit in the interest of justice, equity, and good conscience, all of which is respectfully submitted. Fine. Thanks so much. Um, as we don't have our opponent here, so I do have a couple of questions here. Um, so either of the council person can reply. Um, like, how much monetary compensation you want for your client? Because I've checked your memorial and can't find, you know, that, that monetary, in, in terms of monetary. Yeah, yeah, yeah please. Um, I yeah. In most cases we have mentioned in our memorial and even in our speeches when we argued we gave a lot of exemplars on how much the amount of monetary compensation given most of them range from about 30 to 1 lakh 1 lakh 5, 500,000 we are asking for a bare minimum of about 50,000 mm -hmm. so my question is here like do, do you think like 50,000 is enough Is, 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 it, is it going to help? 50,000 is going to help. Um, so we couldn't oh, hear you before. Could you, we couldn't hear you before. Uh, council person, I just want to know, like, this amount is enough for your client because 50,000, do you think, like, he can start any business or something like that in 15,000, that capital is enough for him? Um, um, sir, we did not intend 15,000, we wanted 50,000, but that is our bare minimum. We are requesting for 50,000 to 1 lakh, the range between that. We want our amount to be ranging between 50,000 to 1 lakh, not 15,000. 50,000 is the bare which we are asking, the minimum amount of, but our range is from 50,000 to 1 lakh or even more, since we have seen many exemplars of cases wherein the uh, wherein this petition has been granted about 1, 000, 1, 500,000 or even more than that. The thing is that in India, if we we'll talk about India, like 50,000 or uh, 1 lakh is quite a small amount. 
if you'll talk about Indian currency. Also, you. So that's why I'm, I'm You're sorry. Not audible. Okay. Is it audible now? Hello? Yeah. Is it audible? Okay, well, the uh, only thing is that in India, if you talk about the Indian currency, like, you know, to start a big, good business, um, you, you, uh, I think you should ask for big amount. It's okay, no problem. Okay, uh, another question I would like to ask you here, uh, that's related to, okay, can you just tell me about, um, either, either of you can reply, What does it mean, the heavis corpus? So, is it possible if you could re repeat your question? Okay. Um, I want to know, like, either of you can reply. Am I audible now? Hello? Yes, sir, you're audible. Okay, okay great. Can you just tell me the meaning of heavis corpus? A heavis corpus petition is filed by a person in prison if they feel that their detention is unlawful. That's right. Oh. Excellent. So having a body out of detention, okay, fine. Okay, um, I know like you analyzed, you have done well research work, but I want to know, do you know anything about article 329 of CRPC? Uh, have you gone through this, this point while doing research work? I, I just want to know. Maybe researcher or maybe uh, either of the council person. Your Honor, um, our researcher isn't present with us today, oh, no unfortunately, due to certain circumstances. I hope I'm audible right now. Yeah, you're, you're audible. Uh, as far as I've understood the Article 329 of CRPC, I think the procedure is in case of a person of unsound mind is accused or tried in court, which is, of course, if they're proven to be of unsound mind. I believe that the fact that he is unsound would be taken into consideration and he may be given a little bit more of an advantage or maybe, say, he would be given a competitive advantage. But also, yeah. section, but also section 84 of the Indian Penal Code says that if the act of a person is done when he or she was of unsound mind, then it's not considered wrong. Right, right. Quite impressive. Uh, your research is not here, but your answer is correct. Only thing is that it's, it is section 329. It's not article. Okay, that's good. Excellent. Okay. Um... So either of the council person, can you just respond like how it is related to Article 21 of the Indian Constitution? Article 21, Article 21 guarantees the, li the right to life and personal liberty, which when uh, Mr. Kapoor has been unlawfully detained for 14 years, it is grossly violated. Excellent. Okay, um, do you think like if there is any illegal detention, so uh, that there is a violation of fundamental rights, so someone can only go to Supreme Court or we, do, do we have any other provision in Indian Constitution? by which you know, they, they can approach to high court.
there is a provision there is a provision it should be always tried at the lowest uh, level of court for the case mm -hmm. so um, after this case mr kapoor can still approach any um, local court for getting monetary relief from the state government the question is um, of course when your fundamental right is violated so as for article 32 you can directly go to the supreme court or someone can directly you know go to the supreme court uh do you think like um uh, 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 while doing your research work i just want to know like do you have any idea like you came to know it's not only supreme court they can also go to the high court on some sort of provision which is given in indian constitution a similar sort of article like you you know article 32 directly you can go to the supreme court so do you know any, any similar sort of article by which they can directly go to the of course, uh, someone has to start from the lower level, that is district court, and then high court. On Researching, uh, we came across the Protection of Human Rights uh, 1993, in which a uh, section 30, it said that um, for the purpose of providing speedy trial of offenses arising out of violation of human rights, the state government shall, with the concurrence of the chief justice of the high court by notification, set up for each district a special court to be a human rights court to say to try these offenses. I researched about the protection of human rights, 1993. I've mentioned it in the memorial too, but I don't think we found something specifically for high court. Just I would like to talk about this. Uh, would you like fundamental to... rights is a huge thing in the constitution of India, even for India. It is a major thing which is necessary for each and every citizen, and it is important. India has taken notice of that and kept that in mind, even while writing the constitution. Article 32 under part third, part three of the Indian constitution believes that Indian citizens can directly move to Supreme Court in case of any violation of fundamental rights, which shows how important the fundamental rights are for India. Mm -hmm. oh. So, uh, point. You know, um, if we talk about India, like we do have our like, Supreme Court. And, you know, uh, India is a very big country uh, with a huge population, and right? sometimes it becomes, you know, uh, the process becomes very slow. So just for your knowledge sake, I, I want to tell you, or later you can utilize it, you know, uh, this point. So the similar sort of article that we do have is article 226. So if, if you talk about article 32, by which you can directly approach Supreme Court and 226 is related to High Court. Okay, so maybe uh, later you can just go through it. It's quite interesting, both the articles. That's what I just wanted to know, uh, quite similar. Great, so... It was well researched. Well presented, your points are quite strong, impressive on the, I, I can see like, um, I'm, I'm really, really sorry, like uh, council person names are not mentioned here on first page. So maybe in second round, I'll request you to mention your name. On, yeah. Yes, sir. We yes, sir. And one more, one more thing. Like you know, um, I wanted you to uh ask for more compensation amount. 
because of so that was actually because i had this doubt if we were going to be trying it as of present day or um in the past so according to that 50000 would be a huge amount yeah, yeah, that's, that's that in the actual case we got 30000 so i was confused because in the past if giving 50000 rupees would be a huge yeah. amount of money but today 50000 is really small and so i wasn't sure if we're trying it in today's present day or in the past Okay, no problem. Additionally, we're also requesting for extra payments like rehabilitation and excretia. We are already covering that and this uh, amount would be a compensation for us. Of course, that is necessary for any personal amount. But uh, 1 lakh is the highest amount of money we've received in any precedent given in, in the previous cases of those times. Clearly, now it is a lot, comp comparatively a lot less, as my teammate has said. But I think that since we've already requested for a lot of payment, which is already covered by the government, we just thought of that. Yeah. No, I got your point now because, you know, uh, sometimes it's difficult to go when I'm when, when going through. So now I got your point. Like, yeah, of course, if you're talking about the past, it was a big amount. That's the first thing. And you, not only the monetary compensation, you want extra stuff for your client. That is also good. Um, maybe you could have asked for the government job, a government permanent job. Okay, that's that's also good. So that you know, it's sometimes what happens. Uh, it, that is in India. If if someone is was in jail, means people won't accept you know that person in society. Uh, very less chance to get job. You know, maybe he can do some odd jobs or something like that. It happens so. That is another option uh, that you should have added, but it's okay. Whatever you have done, it's, it's really good. I really appreciate it. Now, uh, thanks so much. And uh, now in next round, only thing is that you, you can mention like those who are the speakers, so they can mention their name. And uh, yeah, now uh, you have to prepare another re uh, memorial. In case if you have any kind of down, you can ask. No? Uh, so that's just one more round, right? And then it's all. Yeah, fine. So this time, the thing is that we tried to capture separate on of course like timings or, or the biggest issue so in second round again you can decide like who will be the speaker and who will be the research or who is going to do the, the respondent yeah. Right? yeah yeah and yeah. Yeah, of course, uh, I, I was quite impressed when i saw your memorial like you you guys have done a great job fantastic job that's great so thank you. So we'll meet once again whenever you guys are ready. Just let me know. And yeah. we'll arrange the session accordingly. Sorry for postponing. It's so much we both are in different curriculum. So when I don't have exams, she has exams. When she has exams, I don't. So it's really hard to coordinate it. Now we're both on winter vacation, so we can do it. Yeah. No, no problem at all. No problem at all. The main intention is that you guys should learn. You should have knowledge. Yeah. About the Indian law. It's been a great learning experience researching all the cases and the articles. Uh, and if we we'll talk about the Indian constitution, it's, it's indeed awesome. You know, like so many countries, they don't have, you know, codified laws and they don't have constitution. Our mm -hmm. Indian constitution is the lendiest one in the world. And taking stuff from different countries so that we can, you know, serve the diversity that India has. So yes. it's a new world. Like if we we'll talk about one Uttar Pradesh, one state which has, you know, more than Russian population. So now you yeah. can like entire Europe and half of the American. So to serve this diversity, you know, this constitution is indeed superb. Great. Yes. So we'll meet once again in second round. Thank you so much. God bless you and good night. Thank you, Thank you so much.